Hello, and welcome to all our Warzone Today viewers. Asian geopolitics has long been a hotbed of discussions and analysis, and one particularly intriguing topic is the escalating tension between China and Taiwan. In today's video, we'll delve deep into the so-called decapitation strikes and understand why this might be the strategy chosen by China in its attempt to invade and annex Taiwan. Stay with us as we explore this captivating and highly relevant subject. For nearly two decades, China has been bolstering its armed forces with a very specific goal in mind, to invade and take over the island of Taiwan, a territory they perceive as nothing more than a rebellious province. Even though the Chinese have an immensely powerful military in both sheer numbers, and importantly, with ever-advancing qualitative and technological capabilities, a glance at the map makes it immediately clear. The only way China can achieve this goal is by executing what are considered the most complex and risky military operations. I'm referring to amphibious and airborne assaults against coastal positions well defended by the enemy. History is filled with instances of amphibious and airborne invasions that nearly went terribly wrong. A prime example, and perhaps the most well-known, was D-Day. The Allied invasion of Normandy on June 6, 1944. The Allies only achieved victory on that day thanks to a very well-coordinated deception operation that led the Germans to believe the Normandy invasion was merely a diversion, and that the real invasion would take place in Calais. If not for that, and also due to the overwhelming numerical superiority of the Allies at the time of landing, D-Day might have been a major failure. However, in the case of China and its potential amphibious and airborne landing in Taiwan, the Chinese will not have the element of surprise on their side, and they won't have much leeway to deceive Taiwan's defenses, since the possible landing points are few and well known. This means that for China to land troops on that island, they would have to traverse over 200 kilometers of open ocean, facing hundreds of anti-ship missiles and torpedoes that Taiwan has been accumulating for decades. The same applies to the Chinese airborne force which throughout its journey to the island will constantly be under the sights and fire of anti-aircraft missiles. In the era of satellites, it will be impossible for China to conceal preparations for such a vast invasion, with the Chinese Navy and Air Force compelled to mobilize hundreds of planes and ships. This mobilization will take several days and can be tracked minute by minute by the satellites of the Allies and Taiwan. With so many operational difficulties, and without the ability to employ deception strategies or utilize the element of surprise, the Chinese will need to find other strategies to increase their chances of success, one of which is known as decapitation. It is a very ancient strategy, widely employed and well documented for centuries, which involves attacks aimed at neutralizing the adversary's leadership and chain of command to disrupt or even prevent a coordinated defense effort. Basically, the goal of this strategy is to eliminate the enemy's leader and primary military and political commanders, greatly facilitating the advance of the main attacking force, which in China's case would involve slow waves of amphibious and airborne assault. A well-known decapitation attack in history occurred in 1918, when the Soviet Communists, led by Lenin, arrested and later executed Tsar Nicholas II and his entire family eliminating not only the head of the opposing force, but also his entire lineage. More recently, in 2003, when the United States invaded Iraq, the Pentagon tried to kill Saddam Hussein and his primary military commanders and political allies during the early hours of the attack through precision assaults, but they failed to hit the designated targets. In the case of Taiwan, being a democracy, the target would be the immediate presidential hierarchical chain in this case consisting of President Tsai Ing-wen, her vice president, followed by the head of the executive branch, the legislature, and the judiciary. With Taiwan's political leadership neutralized, the Chinese would focus on the military chain of command, targeting the island's command centers and decision-making hubs. A decapitation strike of this nature, if executed well, would significantly reduce Taiwan's ability to coordinate its defense against a massive Chinese aerial and amphibious assault. The government of Taiwan is, of course, very aware of this and has been taking measures to prevent the success of such an attack. For instance, 
preventing the country's first and second hierarchical levels, both politically and militarily, from being present at the same event or building. This is why only on very rare occasions and truly special events can the president be seen side by side with her vice president Lai Ching-te. Another measure adopted by Taiwan involves increasing the police presence in the island's capital, Taipei. Beginning in early 2024, the police force in Taipei will rise from 5,000 to 10,000 officers, which will include the formation of a new police battalion in the capital. The aim of this enhanced police presence is to ensure law and order in the event China attempts a decapitation strike against Taiwan's political and military leadership. This indicates that just as China is preparing to strike, Taiwan is gearing up to defend itself against what it views as an inevitable event. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We're preparing more videos about wars around the world, so stay tuned for more. See you soon.